Yo, 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 what is up, fam? It's your dude, fan of here. Welcome to another video. I hope everybody had a good day. I did. I slept pretty well, guys. Uh, today we're gonna react to Looking Back at Super Mario Run by Scott Stash. Watch me. And let's just get into it, guys. Sorry, I just wanted to put that on the screen so you guys can look at it while I talk. Uh, yeah. Thank you guys for the support, man. And yeah, let's get right into it. Not much else that can be said. Scott is the Waz is a very, really a uh, popular YouTuber. Mostly talks about Nintendo stuff, which I'm a huge fan of. But let's get into it. I, I I had some experience with Super Mario Run, and it is a uh, struggle, bro. Like, guys, they they do not make the game fully playable, and that's BS. I'm cool because I feel like it's kind of, <laughs> kind of a unanimous opinion right now that Super Mario Run is just lame. Who gives a damn about that one? It was one of Nintendo's first mobile games and it was a failure. And the gameplay itself, pff, get out of here. Well, I'm about to do something. It's actually fun. Like, I like the gameplay of it. It's just thing. I wanted to complete the game, bro. A bit unprecedented. You gotta pay like six dollars. I am about to defend Super Mario Run and say it's fine. But a little, <laughs> bit, a little bit of history first. So this was back in 2016, the first year Nintendo sinned. Yeah, this was kind of like a when pigs fly situation. For years on end, Nintendo refused. Yeah, bro. I, uh, sorry, I watched a little bit of this video beforehand, but I watched. You know, I, I kept, like, looking up on the Play Store, you know, I was like, yo, why does Nintendo have no games? Even though I didn't really have a phone that could run uh, any, um, Nintendo games. I still tried, bro, because I, 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 I wanted to play, like, you know, Mario Kart or, you know, just, like, some cool Nintendo games. And, you know, they're only the knockoffs on the Play Store, guys, and that pissed me off. Who's to make mobile games now i never really expected them to do so but their investors would not stop pestering them about it it was like at every one of their investors meeting they'd get the question when are you gonna make mobile games have you seen how much money mobile games can make and satori wada would always answer that with like no 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 shut up but little by little it felt like nintendo is kind of getting just whittled down uh you know investors would ask like he's got a, like a it's not even the new iPhone, is it, guys? I can't tell. It's about free to play games. I've had iPhone for years, so. Games and Nintendo went, no, no, no. Okay, fine. Here's Steel Diver Sub Wars on the 3DS. Thank God Nintendo is saved. But then around 2015, it was pretty obvious to Nintendo that their current lineup of systems wasn't going to cut it and they definitely needed to expand a bit more. Around this time was actually when rumors of a Mario movie were floating around, and this was also around the time Nintendo announced a partnership with Universal Studios to start talking about the concept of Super Nintendo World. They're also talking about doing more with merchandising and just spreading their franchise. Guys, I want to go there, but then again, I don't want to go there. Franchises all around. But that also included mobile devices. So Nintendo announced a partnership with DNA, a company I had never heard of. DNA, it looks like. <laughs> right, guys? Heard of up until this point, uh, just to kind of give them a good mobile back end. While well, the 3DS was doing pretty okay, the Wii U was obviously really failing. And I can't use a spacebar to pause. But yeah. <laughs> hard and i think nintendo did the smart i said i was not interested in the wii u i was like yo i i just didn't care about it guys i'm not gonna lie i switched over to xbox and i stayed with the xbox i played call of duty guys all my friends played it or at least some of the one friend i ha have smart thing here and decided to spread their franchises a little more out you know not be as overly protective of them because at this point it felt like nobody really knew like what mario was up to these days or what the latest zelda game was pokemon was doing like okay uh but you definitely see the difference between pokemon back in like 2014 to pokemon 
in 2022. Just this huge, massive difference. I mean, Pokemon Sword and Shield was like the second best-selling Pokemon game of all time. Never got to experience that, though. If you guys don't know, I was drug addicted in 2020, like, one, and ever since I graduated high school, I didn't get, like, nothing, bro. Like, I really just bought drugs. Except, uh, the only thing I really got was a few new computers. Um, like, uh, you know, it's like a broken down car. So I've never been rich in my life, and it kind of hurts. And I feel like a lot of that success has to do with Nintendo expanding to mobile devices with stuff like Pokemon Go. And that wasn't really a part of this whole DNA deal. Uh, you know, Pokemon Go is gonna happen regardless of Nintendo announcing, we're partnering with DNA to bring Nintendo games to mobile. Because, you know, Pokemon's just... A Pokemon Go's still fairly popular though, guys. A weird, different thing. But it's a good example to show how this expansion Oh, Mewtwo in New York? <laughs> Anshin definitely helped these franchises, where you keep the core series, the core games, on the Nintendo consoles, but you put a mobilized version of said games on the iPhone. And in addition to talks about making movies, and of course working with Universal Studios, it definitely said- And Android, guys, can't forget about Android. Set Nintendo up to be as successful as they are right now with the Nintendo Switch. But of course, you gotta start somewhere. So what was Nintendo's first mobile game they did with DNA? I don't know, it doesn't work. Yes, Me Tomo released in spring of 2016, and this was pretty much a mobile phone spin-off version of something like Tomodachi Life on the 3D. Didn't even know about this app, guys. Yes. Uh, the problem is, it wasn't good. It was fine. I, I mean, like, I got some entertainment out of it for a second, but there wasn't really a hook. He literally, he literally said just for a second he got entertainment. Oh, my God. With it. Uh, there wasn't really a reason to keep playing. It was very, very shallow, and it depended too much on what players were inputting into it. Pretty much the entire thing was... Uh, you know, you make your me, and you add your friends, and, uh, you answer questions on, on the, uh, on the app, and, uh, then, you know, uh, when, when you answer the questions and, and whatnot, you get to see what your friends answer, too, and, uh, it had that Tomodachi. Never, never been really interested in, uh, like, these kind of games, guys. Me-related stuff, I wasn't really a big fan of. I just wanted to play as Mario or like, you know what I mean? I want to play like Smash or something, bro, not this. ...life quirk of like a uh, text-to-speech thing coming out of your, coming out of your me, which was kind of funny. But that's all it pretty much was. It was pretty much just all about answering questions and just kind of giggling about what your friends answered. It was kind of cute for like a couple days at the most, but like... I don't know what Nintendo was expecting with this. I guess they wanted to put their own little Nintendo spin on the idea of a mobile game. You know, the fact that like, okay, what do mobile devices do the best? Well, let's do this social interactivity kind of thing. But I think Nintendo is trying to overthink it and be clever about what the best idea for like a thing on a mobile device should be, uh, rather than just like, just make make a fun game for iPhones. You don't have to think about it that hard, guys. Around this time, Nintendo actually announced that their next mobile game... And he doesn't mention Android whatsoever, guys, and I don't know why. This ...would be a Fire Emblem game and an Animal Crossing game. Interesting. I think everybody knows... Snap, okay, okay. Oh yeah, I did play the Animal Crossing one a little. Then it became DLC as well. Knows that like one of the or I just wasn't a big fan of Animal Crossing actually. The most wanted games on the iPhone was Mario. Leps World Two. Anybody? Yeah, there's so. <laughs> yeah, I did play those a little bit. So many just Mario ripoffs on iPhone. There's so many like Mario Kart ripoffs. People would jailbreak their iPhone just to put emulators on it just to get Mario games here. But and, and now now they just have the emulators just chilling on there, bro. No, they, they have emulators have not went anywhere nowadays. Animal Crossing and Fire Emblem were good choices for games to get mobile versions. Though the fact they weren't doing Mario was very odd. But 
whatever. Come September of 2016, it's been a pretty light year for Nintendo. There has not been a ton of stuff coming out, and when stuff was coming out, it was dog shit. Well, we had Metroid Prime Federation Force the month prior, uh, and then we also had Star Fox Zero and Star Fox Guard, uh, Mario and Sonic at the Rio 2016 Olympic. I really played Star Fox rather than Star Fox 64. I mean, I'm sure if I had the money, I would have played it. All right, guys? Games, Hyrule Warriors, Legends. Oh, boy. You know what's really sad? That's pretty much mm -hmm. about it for what was going on in 2016. Oh, we were a month away from the Nintendo Switch. 2016, damn bad, bro. This guy knows everything about Nintendo, man. <laughs> which fully being unveiled. But, uh, yeah, it was a pretty damn light time for Nintendo. But... Surprisingly, in September, Apple held their normal press conference they usually hold around that time to announce uh, mostly the new iPhone for that year. They don't know when do they not mostly announce a new iPhone, All right, guys? Announce a couple other things. Uh, and one of those things happened to be Super Mario Run. What? Nice. This was unbelievable at the time. Never in my life would I have ever expected to see Nintendo at an Apple press conference. Damn, bro, you think he was just watching it and then uh, a, a wild Nintendo appears? <laughs> I'm sure you would be happy. I'd be also happy. Like, you know what I mean? I, I, didn't, even, I didn't even, like, invest that much into the Switch, but you know, when Super Mario Odyssey released, uh, it, it popped up in my recommended for sure. I mean, this was insane. And the when they announced it was also like really exciting. It was really cool to see. Like Tim Cook uh, was like, oh, but there's somebody missing from the app store. And I'm proud to announce he's coming. And then you hear the sound effects of like a, a new Super Mario Brothers game. And then Yay. And you see like it fade in and the crowd goes wild. <laughs> uh, and you see this little animation of Mario. Sorry, guys, there's a mouse on the screen. I, 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 I have issues with the, pressing the space bar to pause the video. Mario uh, finishing a level on iPhone. Shigeru Miyamoto comes walking out to announce Super Mario Run. Uh, yeah, frankly, it's like the most obvious idea for a Mario mobile game. I mean, what the Super Mario Run. D duh. And that'd be cool if they had actual, like, you know, connectivity with controllers. I'm not sure if, uh, the Mario Kart one currently has connectivity with controllers. It might. Well, the title was off. If it does, if it did, if it does, then you can play it competitively for sure. Like Call of Duty Mobile kind of deal. Obvious, the idea was obvious. It's an auto runner, which I had no problem with. If you've ever played the Rayman games on iPhone, like Rayman Jungle Run and Fiesta Run, those are pretty swinging. I really like those. Now, those still had like virtual buttons. You Hey, I didn't know they had Rayman on that platform, guys. That's pretty cool. I had to press mainly because there was a lot more actions Rayman could do. But with Mario Run, it was obvious they wanted to go for a bit of a uh, simpler approach where you only have to use one hand to play the game. It's really weird. Turns out a lot of Nintendo's mobile games are designed around portrait mode. They don't even give you the option to play in landscape here. Oh, man. But hey, it works. No, I know which one is which. It works pretty well. Turned out Apple and Nintendo worked. And then now we got TikTok, which is like a 100% portrait mode as well. Out a bit of a uh, exclusivity deal, which was weird. Uh, so Mario Run would be exclusive to the iPhone App Store for a bit. I don't know what that was doing. Who the hell bought an iPhone just to play Mario Run early? But I think they were. I'm sure there was some. You know what I mean? And big on this being like a sensation. I mean, it's Mario, and Mario came to the iPhone. I mean, there was like this huge. Finally, finally, man, no more Labs World, guys. You know what game I liked on the Android though it was like Red Ball Four. That was real fun. Huge trailer for Mario Run, where it's like it was like everybody running, <laughs> and like there was like Mario, uh, like it ended in like New York, and Mario jumped up onto the flagpole, and it was like this really epic music playing. Like they went hard. Hey, bro, they're putting all their effort into it, guys. I, I did not, I didn't even see these commercials, guys. But then again, I don't watch much TV, so. On the marketing campaign for Mario Run, a damn...
mobile game. And it blew <laughs> up the charts when it released that holiday season. It was a December 2016 release. And uh, I, I remember like it, it just it just absolutely just dominated the charts for a second. Yeah, so Mario Run. Yeah, because uh, some unfortunate things that happened with it. I'm not sure if he's going to talk, talk about it, though, but was a free app. But then you had to pay for the game. You got access to the first three levels uh, and then it would ask you pay for the rest of this which was ten dollars okay so props ten dollars guys but it looks like a full like you know ds mario game not gonna lie guys like i really like how it looks for attempting like a, a normal pricing structure for uh their game uh turn you know like obviously they didn't want to cram all these microtransactions in their mario game uh they wanted to keep their value high uh of course these days i mean it kind of looks like you know it costs money you know what i mean is i but they went all out with the dlc for sure man i mean the, the purchasing at least the, the demo was free you can get like the, through the first world uh, without purchasing it, but Don't then you just want to keep playing because it's a fun game. I think it's kind of expected for any mobile game to be jam-packed with microtransactions and all that garbage. If they would do a Super Mario Run 2 and it was free and uh, you just had to pay for like whatever extra characters and all of that. Guys, they could have made it. You just had to watch ads to get the full version, man. But nope. Uh, I, I, I don't think, like, uh, I don't think that would really devalue the Mario brand. I mean, Mario Kart Tour already had a bunch of gross shit like that in it, and, and, like, it doesn't really devalue the Mario Kart brand, so. But I think they were... Mario Kart Tour is also fully free to play, though, man, and multiplayer. It's much more fun. Genuinely really worried about that back then. They didn't want to make a Mario game that had like gross monetization on it. So I think they kind of found a happy medium where a lot of people would download this uh, for free because it was free and then they would purchase the full game. I don't really think that worked super well. I think a lot of people downloaded this, obviously, but I remember seeing a lot of social media posts at the time where people were like, what the fuck? is going on here why do i have to pay ten dollars for the rest of this and it's i know right bro i was super do disappointed bro i mean once you get through those levels you just uninstall it because if you don't have the money which i didn't really have i did not want to buy it in the mobile space getting somebody to pay one dollar is hard ten dollars i mean it's mario if any game could probably try to do that it's mario uh, but at the same time, I do have to question, is this Mario game actually worth $10? So this app has the save data that I uh, used all the way back when this game launched in December of 2016. And uh, yeah, I, 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 played this, I played this game a fair amount. I did enjoy my time with Mario Run. I got all these gifts and I pretty much just uh, filled up the entirety of my uh, Mushroom Kingdom here, which was a big aspect of the game. Uh, but, uh, you know, the fact that I filled up everything, I don't really have an incentive to, uh, get the other things. See, I can hit build here, and I can go to the shop, and, uh, all the stuff they have on offer here that I don't already have, uh, I don't have a place to put them, and I feel like it would have been really easy for them to just, like, add another screen here, uh, but they don't. But this feels like the most, like, mobile... I did not know you're gonna have multiple like screens. It, it looks like Clash of Clans at this point, right, guys? <laughs> thing in the game is the Kingdom Builder mode, which is just this extra little side thing for just getting more coins. You know, get more coins, you can spend those coins on things to decorate your mushroom kingdom with. And you get gifts. Oh man, I have rally tickets. Oh boy. See, the weird thing about Mario Run is that it, it's just. The rally tickets were like a. Passes, or like how many tries you can uh, uh, keep playing the game in the free version, guys. Once you ran out, you couldn't really even play the uh, the campaign mode, guys. Design like a mobile game where there's usually microtransactions, but there isn't. And it's designed like a game that's infinitely playable. Like you can just keep going in and play, play, play. 
but it also isn't that. It has a pretty specific campaign mode. I mean, like, yep, there are all your levels. You have six worlds, four levels each. You can also go back through the levels to collect differently colored coins. Uh, you know, each appearing. You know, getting all those coins in one level was pretty hard because if you missed it, you couldn't really go back whatsoever, man. After you collect, you know, the preceding one. So you have pink coins, and when you find all the pink coins, then you get the blue ones, and then when you get all the blue ones, you get the black ones. And I believe I did it with every single stage here. Wow. Nice, yo. He's pretty good at it then. I didn't even know you can... They had different, like, kinds of coins you had to get, man. Like I said, I like this game. Uh, I, I, I just like how it feels. I, I think it's a genuinely fun auto runner. Now, is it anything amazing? No, not at all. But I think for what it is, I think it does a fantastic job of translating a new Super Mario Brothers game to a mobile device, especially in a way where you don't have on-screen controls like a virtual D-pad and a virtual jump button. Because those suck, bro. They kind of suck. <laughs> Nah, you just jump, that's all you do. And the fact is, there's still a lot of skill to employ in Mario Run, even though you only have one button, which is just tapping to jump. There's like these ledges that you can jump off of to kind of do a bit of like a little, a little extra. So you just missed the coin, bro. <laughs> that means he has to restart if you want, needed to go for the coin. A fun twirly jump and just jumping on enemies gives you different ones. There's all different kinds of jumps you can pull off by jumping at specific times, whether that's uh, right before you uh, jump over a ledge or right when you jump on an enemy or uh, just jumping after a roll when you go down. There's a lot of cool skills you can pull off in this game. Now it's nothing mind blowing, but I think for a mobile interpretation of New Super Mario Brothers, that's also an auto runner. Dang bro, I wanna see what the final level is like though, guys. I like it. The three sets of hidden Mama. coins really kept me busy for a while there. Uh, but one thing I really did enjoy was Toad Rally, which is kind of the go-to endlessly replayable mode in the game. Pretty much it's all about just pulling off those moves that I was talking about, where you just want to be as flashy as possible. You want to find as many opportunities to just uh, wow the crowd of toads. Uh, which means you gotta kind of jump in very specific ways, like, uh, you know, jumping off of... Okay, this looks cool. I, don't, I think this is the paid version only, though. Rolls, you know, doing, like, uh, some combos here. It's definitely a different way to play, and I think it was really fun for a bit there. But, uh, after a while, I definitely kind of maxed out everything I could do in... T yeah, if they don't have custom stages, then it's a, it's a massive failure, in my opinion, guys, right? Toad Rally... Uh, like, I'm like, kind of, why, why do I need more toads than that? I constantly have, like, 99 toad rally tickets. I have nearly 10,000 coins. I don't have any more. Dang, bro, I think he's put on a lot of hours to this, then. A room to add shit here. And that was pretty much the entirety of Mario Run for a bit there. You get a couple hours of enjoyment out of this. But, uh, I think for $10, you were paying for the Mario brand rather than, like, a full. Yeah, and that's fine, bro. Uh, if I had money, I'd be down to support Nintendos for sure, guys. Fully fleshed out game. But that's where the Remix 10 mode comes in, which is a really cool addition they made to the game way too late. Pretty much, you're just tasked with playing through 10 bite-sized stages consecutively, uh, eventually just trying to get to Princess Daisy over there, which you... It's not Daisy, it's, pe it's not Peach, it's Daisy for some reason, guys, but that's fine. You end up unlocking which yeah there's a bunch of playable characters here including luigi peach toad toadette yoshi uh, all different kinds of yoshis here uh it's a really cool thing i'm always shocked with how mobile games feature so much content like this whereas uh the console renditions of these games uh just don't do this kind of stuff why like why does mario kart tour have like 500 playable characters i get it it's for money but like why does the why did they put all this time and effort into 3d they must be making bank off dlc then remodeling all these characters but like we can't even get that in the console game like at least like maybe like two more characters you know so after taking a look at mario run again it does seem pretty damn light in terms of stuff to do uh, but to be fair, that's because I have already kind of completed everything I can in this game. And I do feel like that's kind of- They, they haven't updated it. They update Mario Kart Tour, but they haven't updated this one for like five years, man.
I don't know why. I'm an oopsie of this game, you know? You kind of make this a mobile game that's meant to be played in short bursts whenever you want. And uh, it, it kind of just has an ending, you know? It's not a definitive ending, you know? It's just, just Imagine they constantly updated this, so... But then they'd have to, like, charge for the new DLC and stuff. It's just kind of like, it gets to the point where you're like, I got nothing else to do. Mario Kart Tour, that damn thing never ends. I think they did that pretty okay. Mario Run... Uh, it feels a little confused. A lot of this stuff feels like, uh, it was designed for a mobile game that's never-ending. The fact that it has, like, all these events that go on, I'm like, what, what is there, what is there an event for? Like, what, <laughs> this, this isn't a kind of game that needs an event, uses, like, even works with events. I think there's definitely ways they could have tweaked this game, uh, to just work a lot better as a mobile game. Stage builder, but I think they wanted to just stage, say the stage building for uh, Mario Maker guys. And I would definitely be open to them doing <laughs> a Super Mario Run two eventually. I feel like um. Nintendo had the potential to create these mobile games that take over the goddamn world, and they kind of did with Pokemon Go, though that wasn't really Nintendo's thing. Because when people heard there was Super Mario Run, everybody was like, "Oh my god, that's gonna be huge." When people heard Mario Kart was coming to iPhones, they were like, "Oh my god, that's gonna be huge," and they did fine. And and Mario Kart is still huge, I think. Enough, but like, it just feels like they missed the mark in terms of what customers wanted, and instead they went for more so what made sense on iPhone, which I appreciate, but at the same time, it's not what customers wanted. Mario Run was too expensive. Uh, I don't think most people that downloaded it for free were willing to spend $10 on it. And Me included right there, guys. Those who did spend $10 on it, a lot of them were kind of disappointed after they spent $10 on it. Uh, because games like Rayman, Jungle Run, and Fiesta Run were significantly cheaper and gave you a comparable amount of content. You were paying for the Mario brand, not Mario Run. However, I still really appreciate Mario Run for what it is. It's a really solid mobile adaptation of the new Super Mario Brothers franchise. In terms of the level design, they really did fully think through, hey, what makes sense on iPhone? What makes Imagine they like up to, they could have had up to sixty worlds, guys. But I think it takes a while to like make these kind of games. Makes sense in a portrait or they they're definitely focusing on the switch here, guys. Like just hands down orientation where you can only use one thumb. And I think they did a Super Mario Wonder. That that's all we gotta say here. You know what I mean? That's coming soon. Damn good job with that. I think Toad Rally was a ton of fun at the time. Now I don't have much reason to play it, and I think that's definitely a downside of this game. I feel like they could have designed some things to be more infinitely replayable. But in late 2016, moving into 2017. I really had a ton of fun with this game. It was kind of one of my go-to, when I'm bored, I'll play a level or two in Mario Run. <laughs> and that's all it ever really strived to be. But I think with a Super Mario Run 2, I think Nintendo could do a lot with that. Uh, unfortunately, I do think they would go for a more microtransaction-y route. But if they announce it tomorrow, I wouldn't mind. Oh, I would definitely try it out. So everybody else forgot about Mario Run and don't give a damn about it. Uh, well, I'm so did I. Also on their side, uh, I definitely do have a soft spot for this game. Same here. Just wish I'd played the full version, guys. Thankfully, you didn't spoil well, the ending. Way. I mean, the ending's cl cliche, but... Uh, it definitely had a lot of shortcomings, but I think it was overall pretty okay. I mean, look at that. I didn't mean to play it at 2x speed, but yeah. I will never get over that Super Mario Run and Jump existed at the same time. By the way, check out Scott Stash if you had don't already know. And uh, I'll see you guys next video. Just like us, I like how Scott's stash videos are becoming like regular Scott that was. And yeah, that's true. That's true. All right, guys, peace out.